Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we are going to be checking out the Masters of the Universe, He-Man, inspired by the 1987 motion picture. This, of course, is part of the Masterverse toy line. This being one of the deluxe figures because it's in this huge window box. Though I will say there's not a lot going on in there. I mean, he's got interchangeable hands and a few accessories and an alternate head. That all feels like it could have been in a standard box. I'm almost wondering if the licensing for this one uh, is the reason for the deluxe treatment, the higher price point. Um, and what I'm guessing here is that this is one of those things where Mattel was able to make a deal with William Stout. William Stout, of course, being the designer of all of the costumes for the Masters of the Universe movie. That is how Super 7 was able to produce these figures. And I'm guessing that's the same thing we've got going on with Mattel. Uh, because obviously the, the hot topic with this one, this is clearly not a Dolph Lundgren likeness. I'm assuming they did not have likeness rights. I know that the rights for that 87 movie are sort of a mess. They're all over the place. Um, so I'm willing to bet the license is specifically for the look of the character and not the actor himself. So keep that in mind as we're taking a look at it. Uh, of course, on the side of the packaging, we do have some gorgeous artwork, which does have more of a Dolph Lundgren look to it, and that continues on the backside. So I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy, Eamon O'Donoghue. Uh, he's a big fan of this film, and for him to get to work on this artwork, I know that was special for him. Also, if you have Skeletor, this lines up and it makes one giant scene with He-Man doing battle with Skeletor in the Grayskull throne room there. Uh, really, really cool stuff. I like that quite a bit. So beautiful, beautiful packaging. But let's go and get this opened up. That way we can get a closer look at our new movie He-Man. All right, we've got He-Man outside of the box. Let's go ahead and start with the tape measure so you can see that this guy is... Uh, just a little over seven inches tall, uh, so should fit in with your other Master Verse figures. Okay, we're going to ignore the head for a moment. Let's talk about the rest of the action figure here. So as I mentioned, I believe the way that Mattel accomplished this was the same way that Super 7 accomplished it in the Classics line, in that the deal was made with William Stout, the designer of the costumes. So the actual costume itself looks pretty great on this figure. It is a really good representation of what we saw in the film. And I really do think all of the sculpted details on this are very, very nice. You can see how intricate all of the uh, details are in the shin guards here, uh, working up to the emblem on the front of the straps across his chest, even up here on the shoulders. And it's all done in a goldish plastic, which does have a nice wash on there. There's even some extra paint deco in some of the places, uh, like on that emblem on his chest, like on the belt buckle there. All of this looks really good. I think that's all very, very nice. Um, lots of details as well such as the sheath here on the side for the dagger. You can see there's some nice gold paint deco on there for that. Uh, nice details outlining uh, the gun holster there as well. Uh, even the cape. The cape is even uh, decorated more than what we saw on the Super 7 one. Now this material is a lot like the material we've seen on all the Masterverse figures. It is kind of that thin material. It feels fine, and actually the way they did it, um, it's, it's appropriate because it's attached underneath the shoulder pads there. So we do have this kind of uh, loop hanging down, just like it is in the movie. You can see the sword sticking out through it. Um, but yeah, we've got all this gold detail at the bottom of the cape uh, that was not on the Super 7 version. So there is something a little bit different there uh, from that one. Underneath the cape, you can see the very unique sword sheath, which again is the way it is on the costume. The way it comes through here kind of holsters in the bottom there. Um, so this all looks very, very nice. Now, uh, the cape is attached underneath the shoulder pads. It does not look like it is meant to be removed, though it is worth noting all of this armor is separate. Uh, it looks like, you, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, it looks like we could just uh, detach it by undoing the button on the back of the harness there, which is going through where the sword sheath is. So if you wanted to remove this, you probably could. The belt is glued in place, so that is not moving, but it is hanging uh, in the appropriate fashion, the way it is in the movie. You can actually turn the sword sheaths a little bit, or like these dagger sheaths, just because they're pegged into place there. Um, and all of these weapons are removable, which is really nice. So look, you got the tiny little boot dagger which goes in the holster down here. You do have the smaller dagger there. Uh, you know, it's 
close, but not perfectly accurate to the one from the film. I think I'm gonna have to give the nod to the Super 7 one on that, but still nice that it's included. Uh, and same with the gun over here. You can remove the blaster. Uh, there is no paint deco on it. It's just molded in a black plastic. But, you know, you got the blaster there as well, which was an important part of this particular version of He-Man. And then the power sword, removing it from the sheath. Uh, it is a decent rendition of the way the power sword looked in the film. So all in all... I like the look of this guy uh, as far as the costuming and everything goes. That's all nice and spot on. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation on this guy. So you guys know what to expect from Masterverse, and this does look like it still basically utilizes a similar body type to most of the Masterverse figures, most of the He-Man figures there. So you should know what to get, what you're getting as far as the rest of this articulation goes. That head is on a ball joint, so it looks left and right, up and down, rolls all the way around. You do have like the ball hinge there at the shoulders, so they can go outwards, forwards, backwards, swivel at the bicep. You do have double joints at the elbow there. You've got swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. Also worth noting, this wrist bracer is a separate piece, so it will kind of swivel around there as well. Uh, the upper body uh, is on a joint, though the straps from the harness do hinder it a little bit, but you can see it still rolls around there. You can also swivel the waist left and right you got the ball joints at the th the hips there so legs can go outwards uh though it is going to run into some hindrance with the gun holster over on this side forwards and backwards motion you do still have a swivel at the thigh cut you have double joints at the knees i will point out that these are very very tight uh i had to warm these up in order to bend the knees on this figure very very tight joints on this one so be a little careful with those right out of the box uh you've got swivel at the boot cut you can see that the shin guards go with the boot there and then the ankles can move forwards and backwards and rock side to side so all in all decent articulation uh if not a little stiff feeling in the joints um i don't know what's going on so many figures these days feel like you have to warm them up just to move the joints um and you know that's a fine fix but i hate that i hate that i have to do that and i definitely had to do it with this he-man here um and i'll come back to that when I talk about the interchangeability of the head, but let's go ahead and talk about the head sculpt. Uh, it is definitely not Dolph Lundgren. Mattel went for some sort of a look-alike. And again, my speculation is that they do not have Dolph's likeness rights. They just got the rights to the costume. And that's why we have a look-alike, but it is not a good sculpt. Unfortunately, this is just not good. It's a little weird looking, um, and it really kind of throws off the whole look of this guy, I've got to say. I want to go ahead and do this right out the gate since we keep talking about it. Let's do a comparison time to the Super 7 release, uh, which was part of the Masters of the Universe Classics line, technically, though they called it the William Stout Collection. Um, so this was the movie He-Man that we got in that line. Standing them side by side, you can see very similar in scale, and honestly, the costume designs are very, very similar. Uh, we got a little bit better details on the Super 7 one, um, though they were also a bit more expensive, obviously. Um, so the golds and everything on the outfit are uh, designed a little bit better. One of the other things I like is that the blaster is a little bit better looking, and He-Man's got a trigger finger, which this one doesn't, so he looks a little goofy holding onto the gun without a trigger finger. Um, and I will say, same thing with the head sculpt on the Super 7 one. It's clearly not Dolph Lundgren. They did not get the likeness rights, but their look-alike sculpt is better it's more passable than what we got on the Mattel one. So honestly, like the Masterverse figure as a figure, it's nice. It's a good functioning figure. It feels like a good toy. The details look really nice on the rest of it, but I still have to give the nod to the Super 7 one as far as the overall look goes. I think this one looks much more like our movie He-Man. I did mention the cape difference. I want to show that too. I do like that the we got the extra details on the Mattel one there, so that is definitely worth noting. Um, so this is where we can have some fun trying some different things out, um, trying some part swapping. So let's talk about the head swapping on this figure because we did get some extra parts. First of all, we do have two open hands on there, but we've got a punching fist for the left, and we've got this open hand 
Uh, I'm sorry, punching fist for the right, open hand for the left. Uh, I, this open hand is the same one they keep including. I don't like that because I just don't feel like it's usable for anything. Um, but the hands, very hard to pull out of the joints. And this goes right along with the tight joints that I mentioned for this entire figure. So you do want to be careful with that. And it's like extremely hard to get the new hands popped into the socket. So you're probably going to have to warm those up as well. And then I ran into that exact same thing with the head on this figure. So for whatever reason, the movie head specifically, extremely hard to remove and add to this figure. Uh, I wanna mention he did come with this alt head right here, which is sort of like a take on classic He-Man. Um, while I was trying to remove this head, I was having such a hard time with it that look, the neck is separating. Do you see that? And it is still very hard to take off. Like, I don't know. It's like the he the hole on this head is too small or something. Um, because it's like every time I remove this, I have to warm it up. I have to. And then the same for putting it back on. I have to warm it up to put it back on. It's almost like it was not meant to come off. But he comes with this interchangeable head. So, uh, I don't know if it's going to be like that in all of them. I would definitely recommend being careful with that. You don't want to break the neck. You don't want to break the peg. It's worth noting that the head from the Super 7 releases from Classics actually fit pretty well on the ball joint on the Masterverse figure. They're a little bit bigger, but it clips on pretty good. It actually stays in place. So for... If you want to swap those heads for whatever reason, if you decide you like the Masterverse body better, you can swap those heads. You can use that on there instead. The skin tone isn't an exact match, but it is passable. You can do that. So let's look at that other head that came with this on this body. Like I said, it's supposed to be sort of a take on classic He-Man. Uh, and it looks okay on here, but it still isn't great. And honestly, that head sculpt, uh, it's its like, it, it looks okay until I put it on a figure and then I just find myself not really loving it. And honestly, when I'm looking at it, I'm wondering if instead of it really being an alt head for movie He-Man, I almost wonder if they packed it in to go with your 40th anniversary He-Man since that head sculpt also got a lot of negative feedback. So I brought in the 40th anniversary He-Man, I put this new head on it and it's okay, but I still don't feel like it's perfect. And man, I say this all the time, but He-Man's likeness is so hard to nail down. I don't know what it is. This head almost looks a little too small proportion wise to fit with the 40th anniversary He-Man. So Still not quite there, but maybe, maybe doable for some of you out there. And then this just got me thinking, like, what would this movie He-Man figure look like with some of the other heads from the Masterverse line? So I tried popping on a couple different heads from throughout Masterverse just to see how all of them look on this body. You know, I've been pretty open about how I haven't really liked most of the He-Man heads, if if any of the He-Man heads in Masterverse, uh, just because they're all so drastically different. Like, they're all trying to come at He-Man from different angles, and they're not quite getting it. So, none of those really look good on this body either. I will say, the alt head that came with New Eternia He-Man, that's the closest one to looking good on this body, in my opinion. So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the Masterverse movie He-Man. I really feel like I was coming off pretty harsh on this guy. I want to reiterate that I think that the figure from the neck down is pretty good. Aside from the extremely tight joints on this figure, uh, I like the look of the costume. I think it's awesome getting that movie look from the 87 movie brought to life in action figure form. And I know a lot of people missed out on the Masters of the Universe Classics version. So this is a way to finally get a movie He-Man on their shelves. That head sculpt does not work on any level. It really kind of ruins the overall look of this guy, unfortunately. So that's where I am with it right now. I will say I'm excited to take a look at Skeletor. I don't have that one opened yet, but stay tuned. I'll definitely have a video on that Skeletor coming. And the other thing I want to add is like, even though this didn't turn out as good as we were hoping, I hope they're not done with the 87 movie. I would love to see some of the other characters get some action figure love, especially ones that weren't already in classics. We need Tila and Man at Arms and Evil Lynn and Beast Man very badly. <laughs> I would love to see those in this line.
So this new figure is hitting store shelves right now. It's pretty plentiful at places like Target. I ordered mine from BigBadToyStore.com, so it's available there as well. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video, and until next time.